So we've covered logical operators, now we're on to comparison operators, which sound a little less scary. And we've actually already covered one comparison operator, which is the double equals. Um, as we know, this checks if something that we provide is equal to another value. In this part though, we'll cover different ways of comparing variables and values, and you can actually combine these with the logical operators you've already learned to build up more complex checks depending on your needs. So let's go back to basics and look at the equals operator because there's still one thing that we haven't covered yet. So we know that we can place this into an if statement within the condition, and let's just say we have something that says uploaded and we set that to true. We know that we can either do if uploaded, this is a little bit shorter, or we can do if uploaded equals true, like so. So there's a couple of ways to do things. Now it's probably better to do things this way because it makes it a little bit easier to determine what we're comparing. We know that we're comparing this with a Boolean. Now we also know, let's just go ahead and output uploaded here so we know that this runs so let's head over to the browser we know that runs we know that we can also have potentially uh, one as a true value now if we go ahead and check this notice it still runs the block now there's nothing necessarily wrong with this but it can be a little bit confusing and that's where we are going to introduce the triple equals comparison operator now this will give us strict type checking and why would you want to do this well this gives us a little bit more safety and control over what we're checking if you wanted to ensure that a value is exactly the value and the type that you want it to be then the strict type comparison is very helpful and it's a good idea to get into the habit of using triple equals over double equals otherwise you may run blocks that you don't want to so in this case then if we say uploaded is true and we say well does uploaded not only have a true value but also actually is a boolean then we know that this is going to work however now if we set this to one and refresh it doesn't work anymore now remember that a minus five value is also a true value if we get rid of the strict type checking we know that this will say uploaded maybe we don't want this to happen because minus five could mean that there's an error somewhere. So we use triple equals and we see that it doesn't run because we're expecting a Boolean value. So it's a little bit more safe. Now let's look at a more interesting example just to see how this can uh, give you problems later on. Let's say we're booking a restaurant table and we're gonna say, well, are there tables available? Well, let's say there are. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to check if tables are available. Then in here, we want to book a table. Maybe we run something to actually go ahead and book the table. Give that a refresh. We know that this should work because we do have tables available. Now what happens if tables available is set to one false? Now that might seem really weird, but let's have a look at what happens it still says book a table. What's actually happening here is behind the scenes, PHP is typecasting this value so it can be compared. So let's just take a rough look at this. I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna come down here and have a look. So I'm gonna echo out the value one Alex. That might seem odd, but bear with me. So we see one Alex as we would expect. Now we haven't looked at type juggling and casting to types, but if I was to cast this value to an integer, this means that uh, it's saying, well, I actually want an integer from this, please cast it to a integer for me. And int is obviously short for integer. Let's refresh and you see we get one. Now what's happened here is because it has cast it to a value, we've gone ahead and we've removed the text and it's now been cast to the following. So it can be a little bit confusing, but that's pretty much what's happening here. If we were to var dump this, we will see that we will actually get an integer. So let's do a var dump on the following and we get an int. And it's the same thing here as well for true and false values. If we were to go ahead and cast this to a Boolean or bool for short, you can see that we actually get a bool value despite the fact that I defined this as a string. 
So this can all get really messy because PHP will automatically cast things for you. So the best thing to do is use triple equals. And we're going to say, well, if there are tables available, if this actually equals true, then we're going to go ahead and book a table. In this case, it's not true. This is not true because it doesn't absolutely equal it. If we were to get rid of that, this will be typecast and we see book a table. So really the best thing to do, triple equals, and we know that it will always work. If we have a false value here, it doesn't work. So what I'd recommend is go ahead and play around with this kind of things, type cast things, type juggle things to different values, and you'll see what I mean. It can get a little bit tricky, but with time, these things get easier. Okay, so now that we've got that important operator out of the way, the triple equals, let's focus on the other comparison operators that we can use. So the opposite to the equals comparison operator is not equal. And we can do this in a couple of ways. So let's say we wanted to kind of reverse this and say, well, if there are no tables available, instead we want to say no tables available. Makes sense. Well, in this case, we would say if tables available doesn't equal true and notice we're using an exclamation mark and then two equals we can do one but remember we're using type checking then we're going to say no tables available so let's give this a refresh and we see no tables available because this is set to false if we set this to true then we do have them available so we don't run that block now there's another way that we can do this we can say if not tables available and this will work like if we change this to false, it will work in the same way. But just remember that this will also not use strict type checking. So for example, we could say one in here as a string and we see the following and this will basically work as we've already explained. So if we set this to false, the best way to do this is to say not equal to true and this is a lot safer and it makes sense and it reads a little bit better as well. So the other way that we can do this is actually by using a less than and a greater than sign. So here we're going to say no tables available because we have false and we have true here as well. And then that goes. So I've never used this particular syntax while I've been writing code. And I think it's a lot clearer to use exclamation and then double equals to say not equal to. Again, take into account that strict type checking. Okay, so the next one uh, or a couple of operators we're going to look at is greater than or equal to. These are pretty simple and we've already kind of seen an example of this, but let's take a look at a more practical example. So we're going to say rooms requested and let's say that we are booking a hotel room. We are requesting that we want to book four rooms and let's have another thing saying, well, how many rooms do we have available at any time? So let's say we have three rooms available and we're trying to request four rooms. Obviously this isn't gonna work. So to do this and to check this with an if statement, we're gonna say if rooms requested is greater than the rooms that are currently available, then we're gonna say, sorry, not enough rooms. So again, a really simple example, but you can see how this works. Let's go over and refresh, sorry, not enough rooms. Let's say we then request three rooms. Well, we have three rooms available and because we've used the greater than, then obviously three is not greater than three. So we don't see that error. Now, of course, we could switch this up if we wanted to. Let's just change this back to four. We could say, well, if rooms available is less than rooms requested, so it's basically the same check, but just the other way around, then we output a message. Now in this case, rooms available, which is three, is less than the rooms that are requested, which is four. So therefore we don't have enough rooms and we see that error back again. Okay, so to move on to a similar operator, let's suppose in this scenario, you always needed to keep a room free in your hotel. So you wanted to check if the rooms requested is greater than or equal to, uh, and then you want to show an error. So what we would do is we would say, well, let's just get rid of this. If the rooms requested, and let's do what we did before, we said greater than rooms available, then output not enough rooms. So in this case, rooms requested is four, rooms available is three, we see the error. Now, if we were to say, well, we want to request three rooms, 
this works. However, in our scenario, we want to make sure that we have one room always free. So in this case, we say equal to. This means that if three is greater than or equal to the rooms available, then we show an error. In this case, not enough rooms. Now in this case, we'd have to book two rooms and leave one free because we have three available and this works again. Now, as you've probably guessed, we also have a less than or equal to operator. So again, we can switch this up. We can say if the rooms available are less than or equal to the rooms requested, then not enough rooms. We get the same result here. If we choose three rooms, we get that again. So again, this is pretty straightforward. Everything is more or less just reversed. Okay, so lastly, just to drill this in, we're gonna combine this with a logical operator. Now, taking a look at the example we've just seen, we're going to improve this to not only check if we have too many rooms being requested for the rooms that are available, we're also going to set a maximum limit on the amount of rooms that we can book for this imaginary hotel. So let's set up the variables first. These are more likely gonna be things that are posted through in a form to you and we're going to look at how we do that later but let's say the maximum rooms that we are allowed to book is five let's say that we request four rooms and the rooms available are a much higher number so let's say 20. so now we need to create an if statement that combines a couple of checks using the comparison operators that we're learning about and also use the logical operators that we've already learned about. So let's start with the first check. If rooms requested is greater than or equal to rooms available, then we want to echo out something like, please choose less rooms. That's just a generic message for either of the conditions that we're trying to meet. So we have rooms requested is four, rooms available is 20. Let's add an else to this and say, your booking is complete, just so we can see something else other than a white screen. So let's go over, your booking is complete because we have requested four rooms and we have 20 available. Let's say we have two rooms available and we're requesting four, please choose less rooms. So obviously you would make something a little bit more friendly, but you get the idea. Okay, so now if we have 20 rooms available, but we want to request seven rooms, then this check is fine because we have enough rooms, but we're saying that the maximum rooms that you're allowed to book is five. Now in this case, the first thing that I would do is wrap this first check in parentheses so it can be evaluated away from anything else that we put in. Now what we want to do is say, or, and then another check, so we're now putting them in parentheses, the rooms that we've requested are greater than or equal to the maximum rooms allowed. Now you could change that to greater than or equal to, it's entirely up to you. Either way, what we're now doing is we're checking if we have enough rooms and if the rooms are not being requested over the limit that we've specified. So now let's set this to two. And we should see your booking is complete because we have enough rooms. This is under the max room limit. Now let me set this to seven or six or whatever. There we go. Please choose less rooms. And of course, in this case, you might want to break this up into an additional if statement to actually drill down into the real reason that you're not allowing the booking. Either way, we've now seen combining these two things that we've learned about into one if statement uh, and uh, used a couple of variables along the way. So that just about covers it for comparison operators. Combining these with logical operators, you should now be able to use an if statement to basically build up the conditions you need for just about anything. I'd recommend creating your own fake scenarios, creating a couple of variables, and then creating if statements to test out specific rules uh, as we've done here. Either way, that's it for our comparison operators.